Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice, back once again making it happen. And today we are upgrading the Creality CR10S5 with a Big Tree Tech SKR 1.4 turbo board with TMC 2209 drivers and a TFT monitor. So let's get straight on into it, shall we? Right then, let's break the back of this setup today. And today I'm upgrading the standard Creality CR10S5 with Big Tree Tech components. This board that I'm going to be using today is an SKR 1.4 turbo board, which I purchased alongside a set of TMC 2209s and a TFT 70 screen. You'll need all three of these parts in order to get this set up. Links, of course, will be in the description as always. And if you'd like to leave me a like and consider subscribing to my channel, that would be awesome. So inside the box, you will usually find a tiny rubber duck, a warranty card, and links to the Big Tree Tech site, a USB cable, which I'll be using later with this build with a Raspberry Pi, and of course the 1.4 SKR turbo board. Inside that packet, you should also find a small SD card with some additional jumpers as well, so make sure you don't lose those. Now, I'm sure you're going to be wanting to get this installed as quickly as possible, but do ensure that you've taken some time to familiarize yourself with this board and its configuration. One thing that I really like about these boards is that everything is printed on the board already, but it's very handy to go back and have a look at the schematics so you know exactly what cable is plugged into which port. On this board, you'll see at the top the cable input to feed your stepper motors. Just below that, you'll find the stepper motor driver ports. And if you've been reading online that you need to cut these diag pins on the drivers, I would suggest that you do not do this. And I'll be installing these with the diag pins bent inwards and installed. In order to pop this board into UART mode, you'll need to start by removing the plastic jumpers along the stepper driver rug. You'll need only one jumper to be installed, which is the one up from the bottom towards the left hand side which is shown here. The diag pin is located on the short bottom of the red L. It's the very last pin. You can bend this down on all drivers. So what has this got to do with anything? Well it's got something to do with stall guard and sensorless homing and what I've read is you can define the end stop pull ups but let's not get over complicated on this setup and of course the pins can be bent back if need be at a later date. On the S5, you'll only need four TMC 2209s. This will cover your X, Y, twin Zs and E steps. The E1 could be used for a twin extruder setup, but I'll not be covering that on this video. So let's go ahead and bend that diag pin back and install those four stepper drivers. So as I said before, all the information is printed on the board. So you know your X, Y, Zs and E is already printed on the board. So you know where to plug your cables into. As you can see, I have to thank Thingiverse for the file sharing and I have taken the liberty of printing out a PSU mount and an SKR board mount as well. Links can, of course, be found in the description as always. In the top left hand corner, you'll notice that I have also upgraded the heat bed MOSFET. There are a range of these that take your 12 volt feed. Uh, so have a look online. There are plenty to choose from. Or of course you can just use the standard one. The power inputs on these are pretty simple. You're going to have a set that goes straight to the PSU and the others go to the bed. On the board there's also a thin cable that activates the bed which is labelled HB which is on your SKR port. Now you can bolt the SKR board to the mount if you wish. However today I'm going to be using cable ties as this is just one of the steps that I'm taking in regards to upgrading this 3D printer. So again, have a look back at the schematics and take note that the DC in goes negative positive and the heated bed goes positive negative. So you're going to have two red wires that are basically going to look like they're going to meet. It's very, very easy to kind of mess this up. So make sure you're checking that schematics, making sure that you're also looking at the back of the board where the positives and negatives are. So just touching on power again, you're going to want DC in HB, which is heat bed and HE zero, which is for your hot end. You then have three inputs for your TFT. One is here and the other two are up here. So let's go ahead and plug those in right away. It's worth noting the EXP one and two are relatively easy to get right. However, the lower TFT board, you're going to need to make sure you're wiring that up. And again, look at the back of the board in order to make sure that you're wiring it correctly. So another couple of notable parts are going to be the USB, the SD card slot. You've got a couple of fuses and left and right at the very top. You've also got some fan inputs as well. These parts down the bottom here are, of course, for your thermistors. So make sure you're plugging those in correctly as well. And then just above that, you'll see a port that says servos and one says probe. And that's going to be for your BL touch if you decide to upgrade 
So let's start by plugging in some stepper motor cables. You're going to start with your X, then your Y, then your twin Zs, and then your hot end, which is E0. Plug those in. What I've done is I've disconnected the cable from the stepper motors in this instance so I can wire everything up onto the board. And, uh, you know, as I say, just take your time with this and just make sure everything is plugged in. The only other thing that you may want to consider is that if you have upgraded any stepper motors, then you may need to swap some of the cables around in order to get the poles right. But I'll touch on that a little bit later on. Towards the middle right of the board, you'll also see the Z stop, Y stop and X stop. You've may have noticed that you're actually only going to be using two wires and you're going to be using the bottom two pins uh, to basically attach those two. So it's the bottom two pins that you're going to want for that in order for those to stop. And again, just along the top of the board, I'm also cable tying all the cables so they're nice and neat and keeping out of the way of everything that I want to get to. Okay, so that's what starts with me to go on. We're going to be wiring up the HB port first. Positive is towards the bottom and negative is towards the top. That's right next to the DC in, which again is inverted. So it's negative at the bottom, positive at the top. So I'm just going to wire that in very quickly. So the port above that, we're now wiring up the 12 volt heater. There is no polarity on this one, so you don't need to put a positive or negative. You can put it into whichever port you like and that will heat very nicely. Okay, so I've bolted the SKR 1.4 turbo board now to the frame. And as you can see at the top left, I've now plugged the 12 volt power supply in. So it's negative, positive, and then the heater bed matrix part goes positive, negative. And then I've got the heater going into the hot end heater going into the next port as well. Uh, at the very top right and bottom right, you're going to have two 12 volt plugs. So these can be used for additional fans if you so wish to. You might want to do that. You might want to use those in cooling the uh, cooling this board. Here are the two fans that you're going to be using on your hot end. So they're controllable because uh, you might not want them on when you first start a print. Wi-Fi port there. And we've got the thermistor that's plugged in. Now, I haven't plugged in the other one yet because I haven't set the hot end up yet either. Down here, we have the... Uh, the end stops which is all wired in and again we've got the SD card so the next thing now we're going to do is open up Visual Studio and go through the settings that you're going to need for this board. There are two downloads that you're going to need for this next process. Head over to K3D and download their version of Cheetah 5.0 then click along to view instructions. It's a good idea to follow along on their guide in case my version differs in any way. What you're downloading here is a part pre-compiled firmware that you can then easily edit. If you head over to my GitHub page, which again is down in the description, you can edit my version to fit your needs. And you may need to do this if you're not running exactly the same setup as I am. For example, if you're using different stepper drivers or a BL Touch. The aim of this software is to basically pre-compile everything and then export it into a .bin file. Again, that will be a link in the description of my setup. But make sure you download the VS Code as well. A very warm welcome to VS Code, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so my file is CR10S5, which is basically here. There are going to be a couple of windows that you're going to want to open here. Uh, Platform IO is going to be one of them, which is this one. And Configuration Advanced is going to be another one. And Configuration.h is going to be another one. Okay, so... What we want to do, I have been editing this all up already, so hopefully this will be ready and pre-compiled for you should you wish to use it. So there's a couple of things you're going to need to do to start with, and it will basically tell you on Cheetah how to how to set all this up and do all these kind of things. So it, this is very simple. It's very simplistic on by the fact that it tells you what to do and how to do it. There's already some pre-compiled configurations on that. So when you select something here, so for instance, when you select a motherboard, it will automatically tell the rest of the code that that's going to be what that's going to be using and set up a pre-compiled setup for it, which is fantastic. So we are going to be using the Bigtree Tech 1.4 turbo board, which is this one here. Very, very easy. The next thing we're going to need to do is change the uh, change value to LPC 1769 in platform IO which is over here, which I've done here already. Back to configuration.h, right then. So the next thing you're gonna to need to tell it is what stepper motors you're gonna be using. In this case, it's TMC2209, so that's relatively easy to do, done. Moving on swiftly to section three, we are using a CR10S5, which is this one here. And again, all we need to do is basically take out these forward slashes, two forward slashes, that's it, job done. Okay, next, all we gotta do is define the CR10S5, which is basically taking out these forward slashes 
Very, very simple. We don't need to touch any of this kind of stuff unless we need to invert things and mess around and do all that kind of stuff, which at this point we don't need to do. We are only using one extruder on this. The filament diameter is 1.75. We are using a regular CR10 extruder um, for this particular setup. And I know uh, my buddy who I'm actually making this video for uh, is going to be using that setup. I am going to come back to this. I am going to be setting up a different setup with a BMG uh, DDX uh, Bontech. Uh, combo so that's going to be something i'm going to be coming back to at a later date section seven we are using this particular type of hot end in this case and again that will work for a standard setup so if you're just swapping your board out literally that's all you're doing swapping your board out because you want to make the printer quiet and you want it to run a bit better whatever it's this is going to basically be the uh, the ticket that you're going to be looking for so i'm not going to touch any of this kind of stuff because it's already pre-compiled the uh the heat bed is exactly the same. There's no special needs with that at all. Uh, I'm not touching any of this stuff. Right, section 11A we're onto here. Again, I'm not touching too much with this because there isn't... Uh, I haven't got a BL touch on this printer. It didn't come stock with a BL touch on this printer. However, if you want to add one in, this is where you're going to start adding that kind of information. So it's entirely up to you. And again, it tells you all these bits and pieces. Right, the next thing is the build volume that's probably an automatic thing anyway so that's all left in there uh, it gives you a bunch of stuff about movement speed etc etc and that ladies and gentlemen is pretty much it on that configuration.h page now if we go to the advanced settings here it all you've got to fill in here is linear advanced now to be honest at this particular stage i'm not going to mess around with any of that kind of stuff because it just doesn't need to happen so very very easy setup here and again it's in my github so if you go down to the description you will see my github link as well so you can download this and you can export the .bin file and i'll also put the .bin file in a separate file so you've got easy access to that so we're just going to hit save and what we're going to be doing is going down to this little alien dude here and at the moment this is loading the project task so what we've got to do is wait for this to finish and it'll come up with a list of options here and i'll show you exactly once that's done that i'll show you exactly what we're going to be editing okay we are compiling now so when you hit that build button it will then start hopefully also compiling sometimes it gets a little bit lumpy because it's still going through a lot of the code and it's trying to work out if there's anything wrong with it but generally from what I've been working with and the printers that I've built and maintained and stuff, you know, the uh, as long as you get that green light at the end to say that it has been compiled, you're kind of good to go. So once we hit the build button, you will then hope that you're going to see success that it's actually compiled at the very end. If you do get any errors, then you're just going to have to go through those and try and work out what's wrong and what's not. You can go back to your previous configuration or look at an alternative one. Okay, so the firmware.bin file is actually a hidden file inside of this file system. So what we're going to do is press Alt, Command and full stop on my Mac and we get into PIO. And this is where you're going to find this. So we're going to go into build. And we're going to see 1769 which is over here and down the bottom here we're going to find firmware.bin now we're just going to check that that at this time yeah and again it's like 20 to 11 at the moment so firmware.bin is the one that we're going to want here so i'm going to copy that and make sure that it is literally available in here and then when i upload it to my github later you guys will be able to see that and if you're following along with this, you can literally take that that file right there, copy it over to your SD card, pop it into your machine, and you're good to go. Okay, so this is the next part. I've got the SKR turbo board here, and I've got the power supply mounted over to the left-hand side as well. I've plugged this in, and I'll show you on this diagram now how to plug that in. Don't forget, guys, you are going to be working with 240 volts, in most cases, certainly if you're in the UK. Um, so just be really really careful with what you're doing there double check everything before you add it all up and before you plug it all in let's put the screen on and then we're going to power everything up okay so we've compiled onto this card so what i'm going to do is quickly just plug this in side of the card reader which is over here pop them in just like that and then we're going to repower it and after about 10 seconds we should be good to go so let's put, plug the plug back in so fingers crossed we should after a few seconds get rid of this no printer attached message that's saying at the moment everything's plugged in so we should be good to go and obviously you know you won't have your setup like this necessarily unless you're just doing the test so there we go so that's now gone um, let's get rid of the sharp knife 
Okay, so what we're going to try and do now is we're going to home all the axes. Now you can try a couple of things, and certainly in this mode we can go across to movement, move, and we'll set this to 10 because I know these are going to be okay. So with the Z, you've definitely got upward movement here. With the X, we've definitely got movement here, and also with the Y, oh, we've definitely got movement there as well. So what we're going to do now is home this and we're going to home all the axes, so I'm just going to hit the home button here. X is going across, Y is heading back. Again, we're also testing our end stops here as well. So again, if, uh, if your end stops aren't working, this is when you're going to have a nasty surprise. The other thing to consider with this as well, when this Z comes down, this, uh, this switch will need it to be impressed and staying down. Uh, otherwise it will go into a fail mode so when you home this it's going to expect that switch to stay down so if you don't do that or if you just push it with your finger it's going to throw an error up and it's going to halt the printer so let's just see what happens here job done no errors so that's great I'm very happy with that the other thing I'm going to suggest the other thing I'm going to talk about as well is if you're going to do any more mods to this, you're definitely going to want to get these Z mods done as well. So this is a very, very easy mod. All you're going to be doing is moving this down slightly and popping a couple of these connectors on the end of it. And all you do is you run a belt from point to point, and this is your tensioner. And what it allows it to do is the Z axis runs in sync. I've been doing this, exactly the same thing on this printer over here, and I've had no issues with it whatsoever in the last 12 months. So there we go. So hopefully you're at this point now. Uh, obviously I have not got the hot end on this at the moment but I will be doing a follow up video with the hot end but all you should have to do now is a PID tune and uh, I'll give you a link in the description on how to do that and you should be good to go. Now hopefully that's helped you guys out in some way shape or form if it has please leave a comment below and consider smashing that subscribe button and maybe give me a little like if you decide to as well. The next thing you're going to need to do is a PID tune and again that can be done from the uh, TFT menu and there's a link just down in the description on how to do that. There's links also to my GitHub, there's Amazon links to uh, actually buy the stuff if you're considering doing it yourself. Again research is very much the key on this making sure that you know what you're doing just before you do it don't do trial and error because the board just won't take it but it's a fantastic 32-bit board it does quiet the printer down significantly in fact the loudest part of your printer is actually going to be the fan so it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade and i hope this has helped you guys out so i will see you next time bye for now